Greetings. Welcome to the final day. Day 31 of the 31 Days of Tarot Challenge here on YouTube by Ebony Dawn. Thank you, Ebony, for this wonderful challenge. Thank you to my husband for helping me make sure that I fulfilled the challenge. I started out saying I will not skip a day. I will do every day. And I don't think he bought it. <laughs> it's a really busy time for us right now. And um, I wasn't sure that it was going to happen, <laughs> that I was going to be able to do it. So I feel really accomplished. I feel good. And I think I've met some new people in the process. So for that, I am very appreciative. But I'm happy that it's going to be coming to an end. <laughs> I think some of the people on my channel who want to know about something other than tarot are getting a little mad. Anyway, um, the last question is really a good one, actually. It is, what questions do you most often ask the tarot for yourselves and for others? Uh, again, I was going to say, I don't normally ask a question. Do I ask a question? I love the reading. My favorite kind of reading is where we just say, let's just look and see what I can see in the cards. Let me just look and see what the cards are trying to show us or tell us. And that's what I do a lot because a lot of times people will come to me and they don't really have a question. Or they think they don't have a question. But actually, <laughs> I have found that the Quran does know the question. They just don't know what the question is. And often when they see the cards out and we start to talk about the cards, all at once the questions come up. So that's what I really like. Now, what kind of questions do we like to talk about with the tarot? Well, first of all, I want to say the questions I avoid always. I avoid futuristic questions. I avoid I like things like when will I get married or will I get married? And I think I talked to the last one, yes or no. I do not yes or no questions. I just don't like to answer. I don't like to ask anything that's going to cause fear or worry or in the car in the queer range or make any promises that I don't like to do anything that's gonna make a promise for something. I don't like um I don't do third party questions. Like, for instance, if somebody wants a relationship scrap spread between them and their boyfriend, like, what do you think, you know, the kind you've seen them, what does he think about it, what do I think about it, where I will not do those if the part, if the other party is not present. I won't ever do a reading about somebody who is not present, uh, you know, asking for the reading presently with them. Like, is my boyfriend cheating on me? You need to ask your boyfriend. <laughs> Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Okay, I can maybe answer, you know, and maybe I will, in that case, I will try to redirect the querent and say, well, let's look a little bit about, you know, what the cards are saying about maybe some things in your relationship, which might, um, areas that might need improvement. <laughs> and also, let's look at some, maybe some strengths that we can see in relationships that you might have. Um, not maybe necessarily just with your boyfriend, but in your communication style in your um, ability to get along with other people. You know, we need to turn the questions back on the querent and not put them on to the another party, a third party that's not there. Okay. Now, the kind of questions that I really like are um, open-ended questions, you know, and I, you know, all my spreads, I kind of, oh, I kind of, um, you know, I uh, name positions in the spread. But, of course, the wording can change depending on where we want to go, what the areas we want to really look at with the querent. Um, but I like to lay out my spread so that, you know, we see things are um, it's easy to show relationships between cards in the spread. Okay. Um, Questions that are good are like things like, what can I do to further my career? Um, you know, what, uh, let me see. Um, you know, what, you know, um, improvements can I make in my communication style? These kind of things. Those are really nice. I'm trying to think. The reason I'm kind of hesitating, I don't have them with me. I showed in a previous video my um, vertical file. I file away all my spreads for my um, 
here I have the book from yesterday. All my all my spreads that I use um, for things. Um, but like for instance, I have in my Celtic Cross spread. Let me think about that for a minute. In my Celtic Cross spread, I have things like, um, you know, what kind of things. My center card, and then I have above it. Um, I have above it maybe something like um, things that you are aware of, and maybe below things that you're not aware of. The above things that are outwardly people can see. Um, below maybe the things you keep hidden. You understand like that. These are traits. They're talking about traits. Then I might have other cards going from the left over to the right. It might be um, thing. What is the past? Something from the past. That might be affecting the future. Something you're carrying with you into the future that you might be, um, that is affecting your future in some way. And then, of course, in the future card, um, where you are headed or what, you know, what is immediately in front of you if things stay the way they are right now. Okay? So they relate. You see what I mean? The cards relate to each other. Um, then I have other questions which play off of each other as well. Like, for instance, um, how you see yourself, how you see yourself. And another question is how others see you. And this is interesting for me because this plays off of the big three in astrology where we're looking at, you know, your ego card and you're looking at your, you know, your ego card of self, how you see yourself, which would be your sun, your sun sign, but your um, rising sign would be how you, what do you show to other people? How do other people see you? You know, which usually has something to do with your, you know, not for everybody, what, what people see in you. I mean, what you see in yourself, what other people see in you and what you see in you are often different. And that's a really helpful springboard when we're, whatever kind of questions we're into, if it's about your job, it's about relationships, if it's just about simple communication. Knowing what you portray in the public and what you think you do inside. Two different things. I can give you an example. Um, I have a tendency to fall back on habits from when I was a teacher. And when I say something, I like somebody to respond in a way that I understand that they have heard me and understand what I'm talking to. Sometimes that gets a little annoying. You know, but, you know, my husband will say to me, I'll ask him a question or something, and he doesn't answer me. And I'll say, did you hear me? And he goes, well, yes, I heard you. And I said, well, why didn't you say something? He goes, well, I didn't think I needed to say anything. I thought you, you can see that I heard you. And I'm like, how would, I, how would I say I heard you? <laughs> I need you to show me you heard me. You know, or, um, you know, you think you're being nice. You think you're being helpful to somebody. And they think you're being bossy, or they think you're being controlling, or they think they're being you're being critical. When you try to help them fix mistakes, they think you're critical of them making mistakes. You see the difference. So if we look in a tarot spread, the same kind of things, I like questions that really show you a difference such as that. A difference, a pattern between the past and the future. Or the past and the present. Okay, a pattern between what you think uh, you are and who other people think you are. Okay, then I like to see things that show progression. Past, present, future, but not past, present, future like, you know, I came, I saw, I conquered. You know, things that really relate to each other. Things that really, you know, relate to each other that relate to all of the other cards of the spread. You know, if all these things are in order... This is a possible outcome, okay? Which we know that can change at any time. Um, what I want to say to you also is one last thing. I don't want to make this a big long video because I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think I have that much to teach with this video or to share with this video. But I do want to say, I said in the last video, when you're talking about a question, when I had, a, I had an example of the querent who wanted to know the yes or no, should I leave my job? And was really insisting on a yes or no at the end of this reading. And I was saying, I'm not going to make that prediction. It's your, those are, these are your cards. I told you what I see in the cards. You make the prediction. 
And the Quarren said, yes, okay, yes, I, I think I think I am. I think I am going to leave my job. And <laughs> what I want to say about that is, you see, the Quarren knew the answer all along. The Quarren knew the answer to the question that he had all along. He didn't have a question when he sat down with me. But as soon as you started seeing the cards and that they were probably relating to his career, a lot of them seemed to be relating to a career or his, you know, life's work or whatever, right away I could see that this was where he was going. And so they did know the question. They just didn't realize they knew it. And I want to show you something. That is what tarot is all about. Tarot shows you things that you already know. You just don't know you know them. And if you don't believe me, look at some channels here on YouTube, watch them. And every once in a while you see people, pretty often I see people because I'm looking for it, looking at cards, especially people who are comparing one deck with another. And like I'm comparing, you know, a Rider right Waite deck and a Hoi Polo, I mean not a Hoi Polo, that one would be good. A Rider right Waite deck and a, um, let me pick a, let me pick one. Um, the, uh, <laughs> I'm looking around for a deck, I can't even think of a deck. Oh, the Cat's Eye Tarot. <laughs> it's just right in front of me. The Cat's Eye Tarot. You're going to collect, you're going to, um, and I did that on my channel. I compared cards when I was trying to get to know the Cat's Eye Tarot. I looked at the Cat's Eye Tarot, you know, Five of Swords. I thought, this is a Five of Swords in Cat's Eye Tarot. What does that tell me compared to what it tells me in the right away? What is different? And then I look at the imagery and see. Anytime people start to do that, where they're really looking at the imagery really close, very often you will find people who find things in a deck that they have seen, been using regularly for years and years and years, say all of a sudden, oh, I never noticed that in the background before. I never noticed that symbol in the back. Look how interesting that is. I never noticed that before. Is that crazy? Well, it's not crazy. No, it, this is the thing. Every time... It is showing you stuff you already know. You have seen it there. You just did not notice it because it did not apply to what you were looking for. And I think that's the same thing with all of the tarot, all of the tarot. It is showing you, it is helping you read energies that you already know. It answers, you have the answers to the questions or the query has the answers to the questions too. It's just giving a way to communicate the answers to you through the tarot. Okay, that's really all I have to say. That's <laughs> maybe useful, maybe not. Anyway, thank you again so much to Anthony Dawn and to all the people who contributed the questions and especially to all you that watched 31 days of me answering <laughs> kind of answers questions that some of them I don't know if I had any business answering. <laughs> but I enjoyed, I really enjoyed it and I invite everybody to come over to my channel, Good Life, and check out some of my other videos. I would appreciate it. And, um, again, thanks for watching. I'm Rebecca, and I send you blessings.